now being 7pm, we'll now commence. Welcome to the Council meeting of Wyndham City Council this Tuesday the 7th of July 2020. This meeting is being held in the Council Chamber this evening where social distancing rules have been put in place and seating has been arranged to reflect the advice of health authorities. On Friday the 24th of April 2020, the COVID-19 Omnibus Emergency Measures Act 2020 provides for Council to meet and is deemed open to the public if the meeting is streamed live on the internet. In accordance with section 3951A of those provisions, the public are not attending this meeting in person but are able to view this meeting via Facebook Live on Wyndham City Living. In the spirit of reconciliation, before we begin this meeting, I acknowledge the peoples of the Kulin Nation as the traditional owners of the land on which Wyndham is being built and we pay our respects to Elders past and present. Please now stand for the opening prayer. We pray for guidance in the Council's decision making to achieve the best outcome for the people of Wyndham. Please be seated. Thank you to the councillors and staff that are present this evening. I'd also like to acknowledge Kate Roffey, who is here in her capacity as the acting CEO this week, as Kelly Grigsby is currently on leave, annual leave. Item number two, apologies and requests for leave. Madam Acting CEO, do we have any apologies or requests for leave? No, we do not, <coughs> Mr Mayor. Excellent, okay. We'll now proceed to the next item. Declaration by councillors of disclosure of conflicts of interest and or conflicting personal interest in any item of the agenda. Councillors, are there any conflicts of interest? Councillor Marcus. Uh, yes, Mr Mayor, item um, 6.5.5, 6 Wynn Local Business Recovery and Growth Fund. Um, I'm on the board of one of the recipients that will be receiving a grant tonight. Understood, thank you very much, Councillor Marcus. Are there any other conflicts? Uh, yes, Councillor Khan. Mr Mayor, on item number 6.4.2, Wyndham um, North DC pay plans, so I have an indirect conflict of interest. Sorry, Councillor Khan, what item was that? Uh, 6.4.2. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Excellent. Okay, any other conflicts? No, nope, there being none, we'll now proceed to the next item. Thank you, councillors. Item number four, confirmation of minutes of previous meeting. Uh, it reads as follows, that the minutes of the ordinary council meeting held on Tuesday the 23rd of June 2020 as prepared and circulated be confirmed. I'm looking for Councillor Gibbons, Councillor Khan. I'll now put it to a vote. All those in favour? Against? Carried. Item number five, deputations and presentations. There are nil. Uh, now, in accordance with the Wyndham Meeting Procedure Protocols 2013, Clause 5, uh, Section 2, I will be making a change to the order of business and I intend to bring forward Item 7.1, the Notice of Motion 592, addressing PFAS contaminated soil. Councillor Villa Gonzalo. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I would like to withdraw this Notice of Motion. Thank you very much, Councillor Villa Gonzalo. It is noted that the notice of motion is withdrawn. Item uh, number six, which relates to officer reports, 6.1, petitions, nil. 6.2, the strategic reports also nil. And indeed, 6.3, policy and advocacy is also nil. 6.4, the Mr. strategic... Mayor, point of clarification. Is there any petitions to be noted on item number 6.1? Uh, Councillor Khan, there is not, no. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. 6.4, strategic and town planning. 6.4.1, the Wyndham Heritage Review Gap Study Stage 1. The report is outlined on pages 8 to 17 with a recommendation on page 9. The attachments are on pages 3 to 109. Do I have a mover for the item? Councillor Gibbons, do I have a seconder? Councillor Hooper. Councillor Gibbons, do you wish to speak to the item? Uh, no, thank you. No, are there any other speakers? Councillor Hooper. You have three minutes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Look, I'll keep this quick because of uh, today's news. As you'd recall, Wyndham City Council is currently working through a gap study review of important heritage sites from past contact or from post contact in Wyndham. This draft study identifies 141 individual sites, including architectural uh, sites, residential properties, commercial. Uh, and community buildings, landscapes, infrastructure and trees that are recommended for further research in context to a heritage review. 
The sites identified in this initial desktop study will provide us with a starting point for a more detailed phase of research. Council officers will be speaking to property owners to discuss the potential heritage value of any properties outlined in this study and to get their feedback on the draft gap study. The findings of the draft stage, if adopted tonight, will be placed on public exhibition, seeking further input and information on shortlisted heritage places and precincts. And I urge members of the community to join us in this discussion. Heritage is defined by some as a full range of our inherited traditions, monuments, objects and culture. Most important, it is a range of contemporary activities, meanings and behaviours that we draw from them. In essence, it is a reflection of us and I think for this to have real value, we need us, the community, to really provide their feedback. And I really, really do encourage members of the community to do that. Thank you, Mr. Mick. Thank you very much, Councillor Hooper. Are there any other speakers on the item? Councillor Khan, you have three minutes. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. As uh, Councillor Hooper have said that now there's 141 individual places has been identified, and good to see that three community places has been listed for further investigations. But, uh, Mr. Mayor, I have went uh, to see that uh, on uh, off the. Though this road, there is a park, it's called Rothwell, and uh, there, there is a nice uh, old um, rundown house, and it has been left out with a lot of uh, grass and all that, so I'll be delighted to see that uh, that would be um, when we went out for further investigations, things like that, the public can make a comment. It's an opportunity now for that park to be listed as a, a heritage park, because I'm already, I think so. It's already been listed, but it can be now people, the neighbours can be aware of that if it's not listed or they don't know. They will have now, as Councillor Hooper have said, the opportunity to uh, make that part as that uh, heritage listed. So thank you, Mr Mayor. I think we have pleasure to put that for the public and have to receive further discussions on the heritage. And it's very close to my heart. I think we know that how important is some of the parks and the buildings in this city, which reflects the true city, cost and country of this, uh, the beautiful Wyndham City. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you very much, Councillor Khan. Uh, Councillor Marcus, you have three minutes. Thank you so much. Um, well, history and heritage is uh, one of my loves. I excelled at, at school and when I came to Wyndham here uh, 50 years ago, I've made sure that I've learned all the history that's going on in this city. Um, so I'm, I'm really pleased to see this um, heritage review gap in stage one. Um, and, but I am a little bit concerned that there is many areas, and I did receive a letter very late today, um, there's um, a map of areas that are not included in this her heritage report. So I will be passing this information on to the council officers to make sure that they include this when this goes out for exhibition and then comes back in. Um, we must we must consult more with our residents and over the 50 years that I've lived here we've seen so much of our history go and we can't afford to lose any more so I just hope that we can get this report out to many people in our community and it will not a lot of it cannot go out on social media because the people that know the history of this city will not be looking on our social media because they're all older people I would also like to report that I had a phone call the other day and they said, Heather, would you like the um, history of the Werribee Chamber of Commerce going back to 1955? And I, it's just beautiful. It's all handwritten. It's in a special minutes book. I would hope that the council may look back on some of the history. Uh, Councillor Shaw, you, you've got someone listed in those history going back that far. And to see the people that have written and worked on the Chamber of Commerce and they're now, they're down to about their grandkids out here working. So really and truly, I'm happy with it. I'm not happy with it, but I will support it. But much more work needs to be done. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you very much for that contribution, Councillor Marcus. Are there any other speakers? No, there being none, we'll now proceed to a vote. All those in favour of the resolution? Against? Carried. Item 6.4.2, Councillor Khan, I'll ask that you leave the chamber. Thank you.
Excellent. Uh, as noted, Councillor Khan has left the chamber for the conflict of interest he declared. 6.4.2, the Wyndham North Development Contributions Plan, the Project Implementation Program. The report is outlined on pages 18 to 27. The re recommendations are on page 19. Do I have a mover for the item? Councillor Barlow. Seconder, Councillor Maynard. Councillor Barlow, do you wish to speak to the item? Uh, yep, very briefly. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Yeah, five um, minutes. Yeah. Obviously, uh, a city the size of ours, uh, we have many, many different development plans and uh, projects occurring. In fact, um, there was a time where uh, we never used to plan that far ahead. It was um, whoever came to council with a, uh, a farm or a piece of land that they wanted developed, uh, it was looked at. Um, and there was no long-term planning about where would the schools go, where would... Uh, uh, the parks go, um, and uh, it was a, a bit of an ad hoc type situation. And uh, however, um, the uh, the fact that uh, now we actually go into these developments and uh, we actually plan um, how these areas are going to be opened up, what roads will feed in and feed out, I think is uh, is great. And uh, so I actually look forward to um, seeing this uh, program implemented and. Um, uh, look forward to uh, the, the future um, residents of Wyndham that's going to move into that area at some stage in the, I assume, the not too distant future. Excellent. Thank you very much, Councillor Barlow. Are there any other speakers to the item? There being none, we'll now proceed to a vote. All those in favour? Against? Carried. Yeah, if we can introduce Councillor Carr back, that'd be great. Item 6.4.3, the Wyndham West Development Contributions Plan, the Project Implementation Program. The report's on pages 28 to 39, recommendation 28, do I have a mover? Councillor Maynard uh, and Councillor Hooper. Councillor Maynard, do you wish to speak? I do, Mr Mayor, all no briefly. Um, firstly, I'd like to um, just highlight that the focus in the short term continues to be Armstrong, Ocean Road and its southern link over the Melbourne Geelong rail line to the Princess Freeway together with a number of key east-west arterial road connections. And also that the focus should continue to be on uh, connection north uh, along Hobbs Road to the Davis uh, Sayers Road um, area. The Wyndham West DCP project Im implementation plan sets the 2020-2021 Development Contribution Plan Infrastructure Project Priorities for the Wyndham West Developer Contribution Plan area and is integrated with Council's Capital Works Program and Long-Term Financial Plan and is the third uh, annual update of this program. I, as I've mentioned, Armstrong and Ison Road, Ison Roads remain crucial, are the crucial north-south, uh, north I should say, spine for future development of the area as well as Melbourne Geelong Rail Line overpass, Melbourne Road, Goulburn Road level crossing, is critical to the functioning of Armstrong and Ison Roads. And we need the State Government to commit to this missing freeway link. The cost of this bridge is estimated to be in the vicinity of $100 million, and we continue to advocate for it on our residents' behalf. We also maintain the need for it to be a four-lane bridge. Council is now ready to construct that part of Ison Road that is its responsibility from the proposed new bridge to Bourbon Road, uh, from Bourbon Road to the Geelong Freeway coming out where the uh, Caltech service station is. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you very much, Councillor Maynard. Are there any other speakers to the item? Councillor Barlow, you have three minutes. Yes, look, I'd, I'd just like to add to it, I think Councillor Maynard has hit a, uh, probably, the, uh, some people would say the single most important infrastructure uh, project uh, that we're advocating for um, in the West, uh, for the people of Wyndham Vale and Manor Lakes to be able to have a more direct way out of the city instead of actually driving through um, uh, up the land road, for example, then uh, through Sinnott Street, dropping a left on Duncan's Road, clogging up the roads through Werribee, uh, to get out onto the uh, the freeway, and uh, and I think it's imperative. Um, I'd also like to throw in an additional one, because really, when you look at the city of Wyndham on a map, we're divided into three parts. Um, we have the uh, the Point Cook region, which is divided be between 
um, the developments north of the freeway. Uh, Point Cook, uh, of course, all fits within uh, that part of uh, Wyndham that is um, uh, roadblocked by the freeway. Then you've got uh, the Truganina, uh, Tarnit, and uh, Hoppers Crossing area. And then we've got the Werribee River, which actually then separates uh, parts of Werribee um, with Wyndham Vale, Manor Lakes, and the fur further future developments, whether they be industrial um, or uh, residential. And when you look at it, um, really there's only, unless you want to almost bypass Werribee and then do a U-turn and come back into uh, the Wyndham Vale Manor Lakes area, um, that bridge that uh, Councillor Maynard spoke about is absolutely critical. The other one, of course, is the one that uh, the Ison Road, Hobbs Road, they're very important. And we need a bridge uh, coming out of um, Wyndham Vale and uh, Manor Lakes to cross the river to connect it to the west of Hoppers Crossing uh, to give a more direct route because it's, uh, it's interesting that if you actually live in that area and you work at Labbott North, um, you've either got to, again, drive through the centre of Werribee, again, clogging up the roads, uh, down Duncan's Road onto the freeway, uh, so that you can drive through to Leverton North, coming out at Fitzgerald's Road or wherever it is that you, you want to look at. However, by providing a bridge, uh, people will be able to go uh, more direct to the different shopping uh, facilities um, in Hoppers Crossing and Tarnit and um, you can cross the Werribee River. So I think that that bridge is a, is a major piece of infrastructure and, uh, and, I, and I believe probably in the top three or four major uh, pieces of advocacy that's required because uh, um, things are starting to fly. Later on tonight, you'll notice that we've got uh, issues uh, with the developments occurring down, um, um, uh, the, I think it's... Uh, the, the Sunter at Derrimut Road, or um, it escapes me, but there's, you'll see that the reports are coming up a bit later on. So we're encouraging more and more people to move into that area, and um, really... Um, 30 seconds. It's, uh, uh, the place is uh, getting clogged. Major pieces of advocacy. I personally would like to see that uh, we don't uh, do an Oliver Twist and keep asking the government for more, but they gave us 1.8 billion before. I think if they gave us uh, three or 400 million for the west side of the river, uh, we would solve a lot of these problems for only a fraction of the cost of funding that they gave us in 2016. Uh, thank you very much, Councillor Barlow. Are there any other speakers? Councillor uh, Khan, you have three minutes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Look, I'd just like to say that now, as, as outlined on the report, it's a pretty good report now. We understand why DCP is and what the DCP does to the uh, injection of the capital and infrastructure. As uh, Councillor Hannibal have said that now, DCP is used for a number of implementations, the projects, such as a uh, road, and particularly for the infrastructure, but uh, definitely there's a state government, federal can contribute. However, though, this has been in this DCP, Western DCP, the one to four year project, sort of one to four project they call it here. And good to see that the Valora Rise uh, realignment, the upgrade which is uh, construction is only requested. There's six, pro there's, uh, there's about six submissions have been received and uh, one of them have been, uh, we call that uh, removed, which is that this project, which was Bland Road mid block intersections between the Ison Road and Armstrong Road. So uh, I think it's important to see that now that uh, a DCP is being used properly, but he also mentions on the report, page 36 of 183, slower subdivision activity in the later part of this current financial year is expected to uh, persist in 2021. So we'll have to see that how the subdivisions will continue and uh, what happened to the expected DCP to be collected from the people in the area. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much, Councillor Khan. Are there any other speakers to the item? There being none, we'll now proceed to a vote. All those in favour of the resolution? Against? Carried. Item 6.4.4, the Black Forest Road North Town Centre Urban... Oh, yeah. <laughs> that is the, probably the one you're referring to, Councillor. Uh, uh, urban design framework, uh, the reports on page 40 to 50, the recommendations on page 41. Councillor Vallow, do you want to move it? Oh, yeah. Okay, More than happy moved to move it. Move Excellent. It, so I and Councillor Hooper's seconding. Uh, Councillor Vallow, do you wish to speak to it? 
look, I, I only to add what I said yeah, before, um, that these areas are opening up very quickly. As I said, there's another report coming up as well in that area. <laughs> and um, I just, uh, I, to me, I just, uh, looking at it from, because, uh, you know, I, I happen to live, I will admit, I do live in Wyndham Vale. I uh, moved from Hoppers Crossing after over 30 years. Um, and when I look at the facilities that Wyndham Vale and Manor Lakes have to put up with compared to what's occurring in Hoppers Crossing and further north um, of Hoppers Crossing and, uh, and east towards Truganina with the road works and, and the facilities, um, I just feel, think that this area um, needs to actually lobby and advocate very, very strongly. Don't muddy the water. These, some of these in, uh, infrastructure projects are critical um, for uh, the future livability of the people living in that area. Thank you very much, Councillor Barlow. Uh, yes, Councillor Maynard, three minutes, thanks. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Mr Mayor, this urban design framework will facilitate the development of a town centre to serve the new communities of Mambran and Wyndham Vale. The town centre has been designed around a main street and includes a range of retail, commercial and civic uses. Importantly, the main street will be anchored by a significant council site, which will include a performing arts facility, library and community centre. The urban design framework implements the principles contained within our council policies and strategies, such as the recently adopted active transport strategy, by planning a transit orientated development and making it easier to live and work locally and supporting walking and cycling in an attractive and safe environment. The urban design framework includes a staging plan, which means that the key retail uses such as a supermarket can be delivered in the short term to meet the needs of the community. As the centre evolves over time and particularly when the train station is delivered, there is the opportunity for intensive development around the main train station to deliver local jobs, diverse housing types and a vibrant town centre. This urban design framework will ultimately deliver a town centre that is best practice in planning, design and sustainability and goes beyond what is achieved in other growth areas. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thanks very much, Councillor Maynard. Councillor Hoopy, you have three minutes. Um, look, I'm just going to follow on from Councillor Maynard, who's absolutely hit the nail on the head on, in regards to this. This site will have an X factor. Like we are really zeroing in on what it means to have an urban city centre that is for the people. It really will speak for the community and but quite honestly, it's a, it's a way forward, hopefully that's adopted across the rest of our city for future planning design because it isn't just talking about whacking a building. It's how it functions with our environment, how it functions with people and it actually functions from a, for, you know, a, a living lifestyle. Work, play, rest. It really brings everything together in a way that is, well, applaud, I have to applaud the urban design team. It is absolutely staggering, staggering how much work has been put into this and it's a pleasure to vote on this tonight. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Well said, Councillor Hooper. Uh, yes, Councillor Marcus, three minutes. Yes, I'm very pleased to support this item on the agenda tonight and I think Councillor Barlow mentioned about living in, in um, Wyndham Vale. Wyndham Vale was always considered the poor cousin of this city. So I think now we're starting to get magnificent centres out in the west. So, and I'd like to thank our acting CEO tonight. She does a wonderful job advocating for this city. So thank you very much, you, Kate. Um, we do need much more here in the city of Wyndham. We don't have convention centres. We don't have reception centres, apart from our wonderful Encore Centre, who is doing a fabulous job. I just hope the bad news that we received today and what we've got to look for in the future, that these might be delayed. And I think that, which I'll speak a bit later about, it's, it is a concern, and I just hope that we will all work together to make sure that we can come out of this reinventing ourselves, refreshing ourselves, looking outside the square, which is what um, Kate does for us, thank you. And so we've, we've got to go for it because we, I think, are in for a very tough time. I've had email and phone call today. The business people are devastated. And so I hope this will not put this back too far. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you very much, Councillor Marcus. Uh, yes, Councillor Khan, you have three minutes. Thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Look, uh, I'd like to um, sort of uh, give a background. What is a PSP and how, what's the meaning of the UDF? And I take a pleasure to, because it's part of the urban future development now. The PSP is the, obviously, the, um, it's a black forest in North Precinct, uh, which is a structure plan. Once you have a PSP, you have allocated space where we're going to put a, a commercial town centre. The UDF is designed to be make sure that uh, the assessment guideline has been met, and uh, I'm glad that Fraser's and the planning their team, which is called consultants and, and their consultant tract, they have worked hard with the council officers to make sure the UDF reflect the modern and also the meets the Windham Council's local planning scheme. So it has been done the proper, and this, the time took the UDF, so once after that PS has been approved, then you have to apply for the UDF. UDF have been approved, it took two years to work with the council officers, and January 2020, it was a public consultation, the draft came out, and then people had opportunity to make a feedback, and it was March was the one when feedback was closed it and publicly have their say. So as Councilor Hooper have said that, of course the UDF is the one we make sure it's high density, it's a low density, there's a, there's a, uh, and this is a unique opportunity because this is close to the um, railway station. So of course the when you do UDF, you may apply for the number of reasons you want to have a high density, low density, and it's of course it works along with the Wyndham City Council planning scheme. So it has been approved now for a final approval and just glad to see that all councillors on the board and they're looking forward to see that, that the UDF become a reality because UDF is just a framework. Now, further, this company, which is the Fraser and this planning consultant, need to apply further planning permit to make sure they make this area to be what UDF. The UDF become a, pretty much the guidelines to the now on that, that centre. So I'm glad that to be part of that. We were supporting it and look forward to see that uh, UDF become a reality in near future. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much, Councillor Khan. Any other uh, speakers? No, there being none, we'll proceed to a vote. All of this in favour of the resolution? Against? Carried. Item 6.4.5, the Strategic Extractive Resource Areas, Sierra Pilot Project, Public Exhibition and uh, Council Submission. Uh, the reports on pages 51 to 61, recommendation on page 52 with attachments 62 to 95. Do I have a mover for the item? Councillor Khan, do I have a seconder? Councillor um, Maynard. Councillor Khan, do you wish to speak to the item? Counsel uh, any other councillors that wish to speak? Yep, Councillor Maynard. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You have three minutes. Yep. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, the, um, the Victorian Government has been working with Wyndham City Council and the Shire of Gippsland on the Strategic Extractive Resources Areas pilot project to give stronger effect to Victorian planning policy on the protection of strategic extractive resources in line with Plan Melbourne. The project itself does not propose any new quarries or expansion of existing quarries and any new quarries proposed in the Sierra boundaries will be, still be required to be assessed through the normal requirements under existing legislation and any landowners affected must be compensated. In response to the Victorian Government's public consultation on the project, Council has prepared a submission that responds to a series of survey questions and key issues covered in the submission include the following. Ensuring quarry operations remain viable by restricting the encroachment on, of sensitive land uses development to secure the supply of resources for local and state projects. Addressing future conflict issues between rural and urban interfaces. Managing traffic and transport movements. The submission response generally supports the project and proposed planning provisions subject to balanced outcomes being achieved in the decision making process. Council has made a series of recommendations to improve this, the uh, CIRA, uh, and these include additional policy considerations that further analyse and address potential impacts relating to other competing priorities for areas such as the environment, heritage and transport. Clarity on quarry re rehabilitation and subsequent land uses that may form post-quarrying operations. Specific submissions seeking improvements to road infrastructure to better manage truck movements. Mr Mayor, whilst I acknowledge the commencement of this pilot project, it must be said that whilst essential infrastructure requires extractive resources and construction materials made from resources extracted from quarries, 
that acknowledge works carried out by the state government to date. As a growth city, we are still well behind our infrastructure provisions and will continue to stand at the front of the line to advocate for our essential infrastructure needs, such as roads, bridges, hospitals and schools, and public transport, to name but a few. Mr Mayor, it's worth noting that anyone can make a submission to this pro on this project to the State Government by 5pm on Friday, the 24th of July of this year. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Maynard. Are there any other speakers on the item? Councillor Shaw, three minutes. Thank you, Mr Mayor. <coughs> Excuse me. I have been encouraging residents to have their say on this State Government pilot project, and I still encourage them to do that before consultation closes, as Councillor Maynard has said, on the 24th of July on the Engage Victoria website. I do agree with the intent of this pilot project, but I will not be supporting the recommendations or our submission that is in the OCM papers tonight. It is a good response, but I have a number of concerns. Some of these have been raised in the submission, but I'm not prepared to support this without a commitment from the State Government for the infrastructure we would need to support this in our community. I have raised concerns, and I still have them, around more quarry trucks on our roads, some of them single lane, for infrastructure projects. Potentially more quarry trucks through our Werribee CBD, in particular Sinnott Street and in and around Little River. We, have already, we already have quarry and double B truck issues. No current commitment or funding from the State Government for the duplication of Balan Road, Wyndham Westlink Ison Road Bridge and our outer Metropolitan Ring Transport Corridor. These have all been included in our 2021 pre-budget submission to the State Government. Also, the proposed Sierra overlay buffer of 500 metres to sensitive land, uh, urban land uses, for example, residential, is not enough. Experience and issues with other developments within this municipality with the 500 metre buffer has taught me that this term. I know the State Government is currently dealing with a number of serious issues at the moment, but I cannot let it slide. It is too important for our communities of today and tomorrow. Before any change is made to our planning scheme following the completion of this consultation, we must have commitment on infrastructure funding to support this. I acknowledge there is a mention in the report, as Councillor Maynard has alluded to, of the State Government conducting the Transport Network Development Plan, but this is not enough. We do not support, as mentioned in the report, any increase in quarry truck transport movements along our road network until traffic impacts are fully understood. It is for this reasons and others that I've mentioned, Mr Mayor, that I won't be supporting, supporting this submission tonight. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Shaw. Are there any other speakers to the item? Councillor Hooper, you have three minutes. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Mr Mayor. Look, I'm not going to be uh, supporting this recommendation tonight either. And the reason behind that is when I looked at the map of the coverage area, I looked at Belan Road, the Point Cook Road of West Wyndham, and I just imagined hundreds of trucks going up and down that road every single day. And I just can't do that to the residents. Yeah. I just can't. Like, the, the, our infrastructure on that side of the city needs work. Ison Road needs to be completed. And before we talk about anything of this nature, I'd like to see a bridge connecting that to the freeway. Once we know that the infrastructure, infrastructure is on the ground, physically built, then we can talk about uh, these sort of things so that we're not putting an impost of trucks driving up and down residential roads that are already under pressure. I wouldn't do it to my community. I'm not going to do it to the other side of the city. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you very much, Councillor Hooper. Are there any other... Yes, Councillor Marcus, three minutes. Yes, I think that um, Mia, or Councillor Shaw and I, myself, and Councillor... Um, Maynard, we have worked very hard about the quarry trucks in this city, but this is going to be a difficult one. I will not support this because we get the, the people ringing us all the time. But unfortunately, we'll have to work really hard on that, uh, Acting CEO, because they, the governments are, de are depending on all of those quarries out there. So it will be a very hard battle because they want all that blue metal coming out of there to um, build all our roads. So. Um, Kate, it's over to you now. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Marcus. Yes, Councillor Barlow, three minutes. Uh, thank you, um, Mr Mayor. Um, yeah, I, I hear what people are saying, um, whether you like this or not. Um, this is our chance to actually put in, um, in with our submission, and um, we go out and let people uh, have a look at it and, and the 
and let them give us back feedback. Uh, this is one of those where if we vote this down, then the, the community of Wyndham don't get to have a say because it's going out to a public exhibition and that the submission when it comes back, correct me if I'm wrong, um, we will then uh, be able to send it out. It says, endorse the current submission response, to rah, rah, rah. submit the endorsed council submission response to the Minister for Planning and authorise the Director of City Design to make minor changes to the council submission, whatever. We get a chance to talk to the, to the Planning Minister. If we, if we don't put anything in at all, we're washing our hands, Pontius Pilate. Wash my hands. Uh, whatever the government decides to do, they will do. Um, and then we'll go knocking on the door, saying, "Wang, well, I'm not happy with that." And they're going to say, "Well, you know, uh, we did ask you to put in a submission." And um, I honestly uh, don't understand. Um, maybe I'm missing something, but I just don't understand why we would not want to have a chair in the meeting, our feet under the desk. Uh, uh, I think South Gippsland or whatever are part of this as well. Uh, these are submissions to give the planning minister an idea of what we believe to be correct or not to be correct. Uh, but if we don't endorse this and we don't send it to them, then when they open up the folder that says Wyndham City Council, there's nothing in it. So I reckon we've washed our hand, we wash our hands of it. You know, uh, whatever we get, we get. And we shouldn't bitch about it. Because if you're not in the tent, you're out of it. Thank you. I'll be voting for it. Thanks, Councillor Barlow. Any other speakers before we proceed to a vote? Uh, um, Councillor Khan, you can have three minutes. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Actually, no, I'm, my I'm, apologies, you moved the I'm item. I'm exercising the right to reply. Yeah, OK, Thank fair you, Mr. enough. Mayor. In that case, you get three minutes. Done. <laughs> uh, look, I am totally agree with the Councillor Barlow, who said that this is important now, and this is just the, for submissions, the same, you're having your say. I think I hear that what Councillor Mia Shaw have said, and uh, Councillor Marcus have said that, but I totally agree with the Councillor Henry Barlow saying that it's important to say, otherwise, if you don't say, you're not there. You're not there on table, what is exactly he had on the nail. I think, if I'm not wrong now, it clearly says that Tuesday, the 26th of May, 2020, this commences started, and it's due and closing on 24th of July, 2020. I'm sure now, since we're seeing this lockdown, now we have enough time to open up computers and have your time and take and read this document, and we can say that actually, what we want to say. And this is just the first submission and exhibition. So we will look forward to see that, you know, 24th of the Friday, 2020, is, this, is that uh, time is closed, and I think we should be part of that. And I will be supporting, as Councillor Henry Bale has said it, so uh, it's a good way to put a growing council's concern on this document, whether we're supporting or not supporting it, but it's important to we have on the table and Minister know that what was Aminda was saying to this uh, document. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you very much, Councillor Khan. Um, any other speaker? Uh, well, right of replies exercise, we'll now proceed to a vote. Uh, I will begin by all those in favour, please raising your hands. Three, four, five, six. Against? Carried. Mr. Mayor, call for division. Yes, you can do that, Councillor Khan. Okay, uh, we'll, we'll uh, now proceed to uh, enact the division. All those in favour of the resolution, please raise your hand. Councillors Khan, Arn, Barlow, Maynard, Villa Gonzalo and Gibbons. Uh, the councillors against are councillors Shaw, Gilligan, Marcus and Hooper. And again, the item is carried. 6.5, other reports, 6.5.1, the response to notice of motion 590, CCTV operational policy reports on pages uh, 96 to 100, recommendation on page 96, councillor Marcus, Councillor Khan can second it. Councillor Marcus, do you wish to speak to it? Thank you, Mr Mayor. You have Mayor. five minutes. I'm very proud to take on the role of the Safer Communities Portfolio for the last months of this term, but I do feel the weight of its responsibility. I would like to acknowledge the work that Councillor Kim McElhaney did in this portfolio over the last three and a half years, and she played a very important part and worked very hard. So I would like to say thank you to Kim for the work that she has done over that last three and a half years. Um, 
Council certainly has developed an operational policy to guide and govern the decision-making framework for the installation of corporate double CTV systems and the use of temporary or mobile public safety double CTV systems. As I said before, I've lived in this city now for 50 years. Have I beaten you, Henry? No. Oh, okay. I've got 54. And personally know the importance, and having been in business, I know the importance that a sense of safety instills in quality of, our, for, for, of life for our residents. Wyndham has one of the lowest crime rates in metropolitan Melbourne, but community safety is still perceived as a significant issue for our community. I know for many older people in particular, they feel very concerned and it's coming through louder each week. So the use of double CTV is a very important strategy that council need to implement amongst a range of strategies that can enhance the community's sense of safety. And going back about five or six years when we were concerned, Councillor McAlhinney was also on council, we asked the Chief Inspector of Police in Geelong if we could go down and meet with him to see how the cameras worked in the city of Greater Geelong. And it was wonderful. We were taken to the police station. They took us around to all the nightclubs. They took us around to all the shops. And then my son, who was also a policeman, he was in charge of safer streets in the city of Melbourne. And so he took us into Melbourne and showed us exactly how it all worked. But, and this was really good work for us to bring back to the, the council officers here. And so I think the council officers have worked really hard. And um, I look forward to working with them. And I'm going on a crash course on, on, on all of these things. But this operational policy is crucial and I would also like to thank Councillor Khan for putting this motion forward at the last council meeting. I am pleased to know that it has developed on a contemporary evidence and best practice. Although in the early phases of implementation, I am glad to see through the examples given that it is supporting the delivery of a range of approaches, approaches to enhancing, enhancing community safety, such as crime. Prevention through design, activation and place mating. VicPol are key partners for community safety in our city. Their perspective on this issue is highly valued and I am reassured that they have been integral to both the development and implementation of this policy at, so far. I am aware that we have de developed a close and positive working relationship with Vic Paul in this city over the, the following years. And I certainly know that because my son was actually here and, and even now I, he, he rings me. If I get into trouble, I ring him and say, quick, Andy, help me out. <laughs> and so it's, it's wonderful that we have this relationship with our Victorian police. I look forward to taking the opportunity to meet this, with the senior VicPol staff to gain their insight, knowledge and assurance on how Council can continue to implement this policy. And as we've said tonight, with all the new growth coming, we certainly have a lot of work to do and to help and assist the Victorian Police here in our community. But I am certain that we, this will go forward in the most effective way so that we can deliver the best outcomes for our city and I think it's coming through that we want to build a better and safer city. Not so much bigger, but better and safer. So thank you to everyone. Thank you to the Victorian Police. Uh, we look forward, I look forward to working with you over the next two or three months. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Marcus. Mr Mayor, I move that a motion be put. Okay, Councillor Barlow, uh, sorry, Councillor Maynard has moved that the motion be put. Do you have a seconder? Oh, yes, is that, are you, yep, okay, Councillor Hooper, as the motion's been put, we now have to vote on the matter. Uh, all those in favour of the motion being put? Against? Yes. Carried, clearly, yeah, okay. All right, we'll now move to uh, the next item. Six, sorry, you all good? Yep. 6.5.2, commence statutory procedures for proposed discontinuance of Government Woods Road, Truganina. The report is on pages 101 to 105, recommendation on 102, do I have a mover? Councillor Hooper, seconder, Councillor Maynard. 
Councillor Hooper, you should speak in the item. Uh, just quickly, for those at home, Five this, minutes. Is sorry, Ms. Uh, this is just buying an old disused road to make a much better park. I think it's a great investment for the community. Short and sharp. Any other speakers? No, there being none. Oh, sorry. Yes, Councillor Maynard. Daydream, and my apologies, Mr. Mayor. Three minutes, yep. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Mayor, this proposal is another step in Council realising the importance of the K Road's Cliff, uh, K Road Cliffs master plan. No, wrong no, one. Wrong one. Oh, I accept up one. Oh, you, you second. Plan apologies. Sorry, no, I'm getting excited. That's northeast of here. It's all right. <laughs> Sorry. I'm, I'm ahead. I'm right, ahead. Right. It's all right. Yeah, all good. Okay. Yeah, all good. No problem. Thanks Just for that. Just making sure. Well, I did second it though, but I picked up the wrong. It's all right. Yeah, all good to still yeah. remain no, no, the I'm seconder. Fine. Great. Yes, I yep. am. Excellent. Great. Well, thanks for that contribution, <laughs> Councillor Maynard. I'll speak okay. on the next one. No problem. Uh, reserved. Done. Okay. Any other speakers? Yes, Councillor Gibbons. You have three minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I just I support the motion, but uh, I just think the Truganina Cemetery is there, and we should be mindful of any development and its impact on the Truganina Cemetery, because yeah, yeah. there's some uh, some past residents of Werribee there, and including past shy presidents are buried up there as well. Uh, thanks for that contribution, Councillor Gibbons. Here, here, and we'll have more to say on that shortly. Actually, good point. Uh, are there any other speakers? No, there being none, we'll proceed to a vote on all those in favour. Against? Carried. Okay. 6.5.3. Yes. yes, Council Maynard, we're there. Can, uh, commence statutory procedures for proposed discontinuance and committee of management of the K Road Cliffs Government Road, Werribee South. Reports on 106 to 110, recommendation 107. Councillor Mano, are you moving the item? I, I will, Mr Mayor, on okay. this occasion. Thank you for Thanks your Thanks for that. Councillor Hooper. Councillor Mano, do you wish to speak to it? Uh, probably on, oh, well, on this occasion I'll too. I'll assume you I'm, will. Five minutes. I will. Seeing I mucked up it previously. Go Mr for Mayor, it. Mr Mayor, this proposal, <laughs> this, this proposal is another step in Council realising the important K Road Cliffs master plan. During investigations undertaken as part of the master plan, it was found that part of this site was Crown land that was not in Council's jurisdiction. However, Council has worked with state government departments to find a way to get this land under Council's jurisdiction. This will be achieved through Council being nominated as Committee of Management and will provide the authorisation to utilise the land to deliver the master plan. The master plan will allow Council to protect the cliffs from future erosion, erosion, protect trees, enhance amenity, provides control of access points in the right places and provides a safe environment for people accessing the river for fishing and other activities. I would also like to acknowledge the tireless amount of work undertaken and the information provided by local residents in assisting council in developing the K Road Cliffs Master Plan. Once this process is completed, Council can deliver the master plan and ensure this important part of Wyndham is kept safe, protected and enhanced for future generations. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you very much, Councillor Maynard. Uh, any other speakers to the item? Yes, Councillor Marcus, three minutes. Thank you very much. Um, I'm happy also to support the road discontinuance to enable Council to continue with the management of the K Road cliffs. But I again have been handed a report that was given to the council back in 2011, again in 2015, and a lot of the points that they put in have not been included in this master plan. So I just need to make that, uh, to do that. To date, everything has been moving too slowly and concerns by many residents that are well educated in this area is that the cliffs will continue to erode at a very great rate. All that we can hope for with this work continuing that we just may be able to slow the erosion of these cliffs. And this is why the council officers need to look at this report that was done that will enable them to understand what is the underlying factors under the, under the cliffs because it is not hard or soft clay, it has pebbles and sand which will probably just wash away and collapse, which has happened recently. The drainage has caused a lot of damage, but more importantly, as I said, it is the composition of the materials inside the cliffs. These are iconic and we need to speed up this work very quickly. 
It is important to know the obligations for the Committee of Management, and this has been explained on page 108 of the agenda. But I do hope that the Committee of Management agreements to the ministerial sign-off will not take 12 months to implement. That is far too long. So again, to our Advocate Director, Kate, <laughs> please, we need to get this to the minister and get on with it. Um, I would also like to see the residents um, that have worked with the council officers to make sure that some of those are on this committee of management, but it is quite a little bit different from a normal committee of management, but we need our residents on this committee. So as I said, this is urgent and we need to listen to the market gardeners. 30 seconds, Councillor Marcus. Okay, thank you. We need to look because there are sinkholes in Werribee South. We're not sure if there's not sinkholes in the cliffs, so we really need to do a lot of work. Thank you again to Antoinette, um, who I've been speaking to her today. So um, we just, it, it's urgent that we get on with it. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks very much, uh, Councillor Marcus. Any other speakers to the item? There being none, we'll now proceed to a vote. All those in favour of the resolution? Against? Carried. Item 6.5.4, the notice of intention to lease sites at Davis Creek, Riverwalk and Riverdale to early years providers. Reports on 111 to 113 and the recommendations on 111. Do I have a mover? Uh, Councillor Short. Seconder, Councillor Khan. Councillor Short, do you want to speak to it? No. Nope. Any speakers? Nope. We'll proceed to a vote. All those in favour? Against, carried. Item six, uh, Councillor Marcus. Yep, I'll now ask you to. Sorry. Yes, please. As noted, Councillor Marcus has a conflict of interest on this item uh, and is therefore left for the purposes of this item. Okay, uh, we are now discussing the Wynn Local Business Recovery and Growth Fund, the reports on 114 to 120, recommendation on 115, the attachments on 121 to 129. Do I have a mover? Councillor Shaw and Councillor Villa Gonzalo can second. Councillor Shaw, are you speaking to the item? Yeah, thank you. Five Excuse minutes. me, thank you, Mr Mayor. <clears throat> Just briefly, um, I think this is uh, a, an excellent um, assessment um, from the panel um, in terms of the funding from our Win Local Economic Support Package. And it couldn't come at a better time for our businesses um, in light of you know, our recent announcements. So um, completely support this. Um, I went through the list, um, very well-deserved, uh, well-deserving businesses um, in this very extensive list um, of grants that we'll be giving to businesses in our community. And this is just uh, one of the, the um, great initiatives that we've put together as part of our Win Local Economic Package and yeah, completely support this. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you very much, Councillor Shaw. Are there any other speakers? Councillor Villa Gonzalo, three minutes. Thank you, Mr Mayor. On March 23, out in the parking lot outside this building, we had our special <laughs> council meeting to endorse <laughs> the $5 million win local economic support package in response to the economic challenges faced by our local businesses due to the COVID-19 pandemic. A major initiative included was the win local business recovery and growth program. And it's an, an, an initial fund of 1.5 million was allocated for distribution in a competitive application process. There were 458 businesses who applied and 285, 285 were recommended to receive the grant. The funding pool was increased to two million to cover the grants, um, grant amounts to be awarded. Tonight we are receiving the report on which businesses and organizations are receiving the grant. I am supporting the recommendations of the assessment panel, congratulate the recipients and thank our council team managing and implementing this program. Unfortunately, 173 were un unsuccessful and more may not have been able to submit applications on time. Businesses that need support also. Council may need to look at how we can assist them as well. Almost everybody needs support because everyone has been affected in one way or another. We do not know when these restrictions and the economic implications to businesses and workers are going to stay 
And we don't have unlimited funds to make available to help. We are doing what we can to support our local businesses and the Wyndham community in general. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Well said, Councillor Villagonzalo. Are there any other speakers? Yes, Councillor Hooper. And then we'll go to Councillor Arn. Sorry, Councillor Arn. Councillor Hooper, three minutes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, look, I'm just going to be quick. I'm being quick tonight. We've had a pretty ordinary news, so the faster we get through this meeting, better. Um, but I just wanted to say, this shows the depth and breadth of our business community. Wyndham really is a city of entrepreneurs, people that will give it a go, people that will put their you know, financial risk, uh, well, financial future on the line to actually create business, create jobs, create wealth for our community, something that we desperately need. And with this grant, this process that the council is voting on tonight, it's just us saying thank you very much. We're supporting you but thank you for bringing your business to the community. We actually appreciate and value uh, what you do, and it's something that I don't think anyone forgets or takes for granted around this chamber. So thank you to the community. And thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you very much, Councillor Hooper. Are there any, yes, Councillor Ahn, three minutes. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I'd also like to congratulate all successful applicants. I congratulate their efforts for making the applications. I acknowledge this is not an easy process. And because of its complexity, the process of uh, assessment of the applications did take some time. And I want to commit the work done by Ludo's team, Antoinette, Dairo, and all council staffs who worked hard on this initiative to support our local business. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much, Councillor Ahn. Councillor Khan. Three minutes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Can I just say now, it's, it's great to see that we started 1.5 now and we went to 2 million. And uh, this is just the way of uh, understanding what's happening and due to the COVID-19. This is just a strong signal to the business community. If you are a part of a Wyndham business, business, now we will support you. Now, the process has been run thoroughly and as a council have done it, so the who have the ABN having a business in Wyndham, that all people have received the funding. And can I also say then a congratulations those people have received. The grant was done in three parts, $5,000, there was $10,000, there was $20,000, and it was a different terms and conditions who can get $5,000, $10,000, and $20,000. Now, pleased to see that I think we have given $2 million now in totals for as per this uh, document, and uh, Daryl and his team have done a great job. Now, the 14th of August, the money will be dispatched. So can I say, Mr. Ma uh, Mr. Mayor, I know that we rushed it, and we did it $5 million, and this is a part of $5 million dollar package, and can I say that now, it took a little bit longer, but it's still okay, not a late, because 14th August is not that far, and now we know that now, to tomorrow onwards, the lockdown situation, business will be more affected. So this is good to see that now this, this, some of those funds can be, re can be released to them on 14th of August. That will definitely going to help it because the small business need more support. I'm a great believer and firm believer now, and I think due to the COVID-19 situation now happening in Victoria State, we might be end up, or, or we have to maybe look now, the review the strategy, maybe have to give it more because I don't think so. The one, $2 million is going to be enough because business is going to have no more issues, and we didn't thought that the second pandemic will come. So we we'll look forward to see that now, Mr. Mayor, how situation will fold in near future. But definitely, Wyndham's giving a strong message to the businesses. We do care about you, and those who some missed out, or might be now thinking that they have not received it, maybe the Wyndham City Council will review this policy, and we we'll look forward as the as the time goes and the situation gets uh, hopefully get better. We'll see what what. The Wyndham City Council can do, but you can have when the City Council is back, we'll be definitely supporting it. And this is Council great count 30 seconds. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm just summing up my Excellent. speech, and it's good to see that you know we're supporting small businesses. I wish we could support ratepayers too. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much, Councillor Khan. Um, are there any other speakers before I outline the next steps? No, there are none. Uh, to enable um, procedural fairness to Councillor Marcus, what I intend to do, so long as I'm able to get uh, the mover and the second to agree, is that uh, we vote on the Werribee Racing Club, the item that Councillor Marcus had a conflict on, to enable her to then vote on the um, 
the substantive resolution. Is that okay with the mover and the seconder? I need a yes answer. Yeah. Councillor Short. Well, of course. But okay, thank you. Councillor Villa Gonzalez. Well, actually, it should have, this should have been raised before we actually started debate, I would have thought. I understand. Nevertheless, I'm trying to fix the problem. Are you oh. okay with that? Excellent. <laughs> okay, so to be clear, what I intend to do is extract the Werribee Racing Club, which was the item that Councillor Marcus had a conflict on. We will vote on that as a fourth um, component, so a technically an amendment. Uh, we've got that moved and seconded by uh, the original mover and seconder. And then I will ask Councillor Marcus to come in. Then we will vote on the other three components. Okay, am I clear? Yes? yes. Excellent. Okay. With that in mind, we'll now vote on that matter. So all those in favour of the fourth um, item, the yes, okay, it's pretty clear. Excellent against. Okay, carried. I'll ask the Councillor Marcus to come in. Okay, now what I intend to do is deal with items one to three of this resolution. Um, I'm going to assume that the speakers do not wish to speak again on the item. Is that clear? Yes, excellent. Uh, Councillor Ahn wished to speak on the item. He does not. Okay. Uh, do you wish to speak on the item? Yes. Okay, you have three minutes on. Uh, and to be clear, this is now dealing with items one to three. Correct. Three minutes. Mr. Mayor, I do re reserve my right to reply on this. Uh, yes. Uh, if, if so, um, as the. If uh, anyone else. Hang on. Uh, as the um, mover has asked for a right of reply, can I just clarify, are you voting for or against the item? Yes. Are you for or against the item, Councillor Marcus? But we, shouldn't we debate before we Well, we did. did. And so I have, uh, with indulgence of the council, um, enabled you to come in to discuss the items one to three. So are you intending to vote? Are you for or against? Well, I will be for. OK. Yes, but I, I wish you... to debate. But I did make it clear when I called the conflict of interest, I was only That's fine. It's been dealt with. One. Yep. So now you have three minutes yes, to speak, no. and that yes. starts yes. now. Yes. Yes, it well, starts now. Yep, yep, three minutes. Go. OK. Um, well, it's a bit difficult. I haven't heard what other people have said. But cl very clearly, after today, we are not where we want to be with the announcement from the, from the government with the, the lockdown over the next six months. Hopefully, six the recipients of these generous grants from Council will assist with their businesses. I note that the different categories that they have listed and the many who had advised that they would spend their funds on were engaged business specialists and professional developments. Over the last two weeks, I've been extremely lucky to be involved in international virtual presentations. And the last one was last Thursday, around the world in 240 minutes. It was long, but very encouraging, inspiring, and made us all feel that we could go forward. But today, that has probably dampened absolutely everything for us. Having been a business person and my, my family are still in businesses, we absolutely are di so disappointed to know how we had reinvented ourselves, we were ready to go, and here it is, it's back down now. The federal and state governments have had all excellent packages, um, but with the metropolitan Melbourne going into stage three lockdown, this is going to be devastating for our business and the effect that it will have on them. The gyms, everyone have been ringing today saying that they feel that probably they just will not probably be able to open in the future. I know many businesses who have not applied because they managed and had, have had generous landlords and I want to thank the landlords in this city who have given three months free rent and or 50% but unfortunately they won't be able to continue to do that. Sadly, many more business people uh, and the landlords will now suffer from what our government has had to do today and it's, of course he's had to do it. There is no sitting back here now. We cannot blame anyone. It is back with us. We must all reinvent ourselves. We must refresh. We must think outside the square and come out of this next six weeks ready to work together to help everybody in this city. And I think the council now after giving this, the generosity to these business people. I hope the business people look at these international speakers around the world and take on board how they are trying to lift all the business people to come out of the pandemic. But unfortunately, Victoria's now gone backwards. So let's hope 
that uh, I, and I know council, I think we'll have to watch out. 15 seconds, well. Councillor Marcus. So um, it is a very sad thing today. I think uh, we, we all had a cry in the salon um, because we just don't know what's going to happen from here on in for all the business people. Thank you. Understood. Thank you very much, Councillor Marcus. We're now going to proceed to vote on items one to three. Uh, all those in favour of the resolution? Against? Carried. Great result. 6.5.6, .6, the Audit and Risk Management Committee Charter Review, the reports on 130 to 132, recommendation on 130, attachments 133 to 140. Do I have a mover? Councillor Maynard, seconder. Councillor Khan. Councillor Maynard, do you wish to speak to it? I do, Mr Mayor. Thank you. Five minutes. This report relates to the Charter for Council's Audit and Risk Management Committee. The current Charter was adopted by Council back in February 2018, and this update that we are considering this evening is both part of our regular review process, but also one which particularly addresses the requirements of the Local Government Act 2020. The Local Government Act 2020 uh, in Section 8 requires Council to have an Audit and Risk Committee and to adopt a committee charter by 1 September 2020. It is important to note that Wyndham already has had an Audit and Risk Committee in place for a number of years and has been operating in a manner well aligned with the expectations communicated in the Act. The Audit and Risk Committee, a Management Committee, is an independent advisory committee to Council. As such, it is made up of independent members, including the Chair and also Council representatives. It demonstrates our commitment to effective and transport, transport, transparent governance processes. The revision of this Charter today has considered the impact of the new Act. The Audit Committee is good practice for local government, our current practices and member recommendations. The revised Charter creates great alignment across the committee process, annual work plan, meeting agenda and annual review. It enables clarity of purpose in what information is prepared and how it, it is presented for discussion during the Audit and Risk Management Committee. It also requires that a biannual audit and risk report to Council be presented to Council to update on the activities of the committee. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you very much, Councillor Maynard. Any other speakers to the item? Councillor Khan, three minutes. Thank you, Mr Mayor. It's important to have the review of this as per the Local Government Act 2020 because this is a part of the compliance under Section 8 of the uh, Local Government Act 2020. And this is just the charter of the community, what they have to do, the role, and the pretty much membership. And as Councillor Peter Maynard have said, that you know it's, in, it's run by independent, but also these are not two councillors, these are three councillors, including the mayor makes it three in this application as outlined on membership. So two are councillors and one as a mayor, total in three. And I would just like to say that now previous member, which is the Councillor Kim McLaney, have resigned and she was a member of the risk audit committee and now we have filled this uh, committee as by temporary. If I'm not sure, um, if I'm not wrong, Mr. Peter Menard is the is now filling the position, which left us in a limbo. But uh, that's what this document is all about, because if we have a document, we can follow that. If somebody resigns and uh, if the positions get vacant, we can have to follow the rules. And this is what is uh, outlined. So I'm good to see that now, 1st of September of 2020, we can adopt it and the new, uh, the council or the new, um, that the council will decide who will chair and who will be the councillors sitting on the Risk and Audit Committee. <coughs> Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you very much, Councillor Khan. Do you have uh, any other speakers? There being none, we'll proceed to a vote. All those in favour of the item? Against, carried. Item 6.5.7, .7, the Governance Rules, Public Transparency Policy and Councillors' Expense and Entitlement Policy. Report on 141 to 146, recommendation on 142, the attachments on 195 to 247. Do I have a mover? Uh, Councillor Gibbons, seconder, Councillor Maynard. Councillor Gibbons, do you wish to speak no. to the item? No. Any other speakers? <coughs> yeah, uh, 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 Councillor Marcus, yeah, three minutes. Thank you. Um, I, I think this is a, an excellent policy. Um, and it, it's, it's put in place and of course we'll go into the next term of council, but I think it covers all, all of the key areas. Um, and <coughs> I, it is to go out for um, co community consultation. Um, but I, I will just say this in view of what's happened today. Um, 
I think that we will make, to need to make sure that our expenses are down to nil. And in fact, I would even go further and say I'd be happy to uh, lessen the councillor fees that were paid, our allowance, because I think we have to lead by, uh, by um, we have to lead and let the people see that we're prepared to take less uh, when everybody else is so far down. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Marcus. Councillor Khan, did you wish to speak to the item? No, yes. Thank yes. you, Mr Mayor. Okay, three minutes. Yeah, thank you, Mr Mayor. Look, I think it's important to know that people can know that uh, uh, how important is the public transport policy in council expense, because there has been a instant where people might think, you know, that has, the council goes out and who's paying for the parking and who's paying all that. So this policy outline how the whole thing works. But also, though, I think, if I'm not wrong, this entitlement policy, which just talks about it, if you're doing a, any course, or such as MICD, AICD course, and things like that, when council can be entitled, and when you have to pay back, and things like that. So this is a great document to talk about, what we're entitled for, what we're not entitled for. So I will be supporting it and say that it's, it's, it's a transparent and clear. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you very much, Councillor Khan. Councillor Maynard, you have three minutes. Yeah, thank you, Mr Mayor. I, I, I was going to say anything, but I think uh, on this occasion uh, I will. Uh, I certainly uh, agree with the, uh, uh, the recommendation that is put forward. However, uh, one of the things that I have suggested uh, on a couple of occasions uh, that hasn't been included, uh, it's been left to, the, uh, to the, um, the remit of the Mayor and the CEO that any councillor that, that uh, consistently uh, is enrolled in uh, courses and or uh, seminars and does not attend should quite unequivocally uh, bear that cost themselves, Mr Mayor. That is not in this document. At some stage I would like to see that, but uh, we can always uh, live to uh, consider the uh, document at another time. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you very much, Councillor Maynard. Councillor Shaw, you have three minutes. <coughs> Thank you, Mr Mayor. I just want to point out that the document that the policy that's going to community consultation is the governance rules and draft public transparency policy. That is a new policy under the Local Government Act and that will go to community consultation. Uh, and the recommendation is to adopt the reviewed council expenses and entitlements policy, which is actually not a new policy. It is the current policy. It's just gone into the new format um, under the current Local Government Act. And it actually says in the report that it is something that will be reviewed next council term. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you for that contribution slash clarification, Councillor Shaw. Very important. OK, are there any other speakers? Yes, Councillor Hooper, uh, three minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, look, there's one little piece of this expenses policy I'm absolutely proud of. Uh, it's not much, but for our community, I think it actually means a lot. Uh, we're a young community with young families. And in the previous policy, there was babysitting expenses capped at 20 bucks. Now, if you're got young kids, finding a babysitter for 20 bucks an hour is pretty, pretty rare. Uh, this doesn't have that cap. It's a reasonable expense. As long as it's incurred for reasonable, or for the correct purposes, it's reimbursed, uh, it will be reimbursed, which I think is important because it means families with kids are able to stand for council and represent, knowing that there's at least a safety net for those times when you're absolutely desperate for a babysitter to be able to do your job as a councillor. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Well said, Councillor Hooper. Are there any other speakers? Councillor Arn, three minutes. Thank you, Ms Mayor. Uh, my speech will be short. So uh, as my fellow councillor just mentioned that the public transparency policy is a new policy that council is uh, making. And uh, this policy, I believe, will be a very important foundation of the open data initiative of the smart city strategy. And uh, this uh, draft policy will be on pu public consultation start from tomorrow. So I do invite our community to give some feedback. So this is very important. So I'm really looking forward to see community feedback. Thank you. Thank Mr. you very much, Councillor Ahn. Any other? Uh, uh, yep. OK, we're going to proceed to a vote on that basis. All those in favour of the item? Against? Councillor Man, are we for or against? Oh, oh four. yes, you're yes. for. Okay, Sorry. thank you. Yes. Carried. Okay, we'll now move to the next item, 6.5.8, the Assembly of Councillors. 
The reports on 147, as is the recommendation, attachments 148, mover, Councillor Gibbons, seconder, Councillor Hooper. Uh, we're not, are you speaking to the item? No. Any other speakers? No? Okay, proceeding to a vote. All those in favour? Against? Carried. Item seven, notices of motion, nil. Eight, council seal, nil. Uh, uh, yes, 8.1, the awarding of contract C208, uh, forward slash 18, the curbside waste collection services. The reports on 151 to 156. Recommendation on 151. Do I have a mover, Councillor Maynard, Councillor Gibbons? It's the second of Councillor Maynard. Do you wish to speak to the item? I do, Mr Mayor, and uh, I, I promise not to uh, talk rubbish, waste anyone's <laughs> time or recycle old jokes. So, Mr Mayor, I believe we are at a pivotal point in the treatment of waste in this city. Our curbside service is one of the key services provided by Council, and this contract is one more step in a well-planned process to achieve this Council's goal to embrace the circular economy and reuse, repurpose and recycle. This contract builds on and maintains the current service from, beginning, from the beginning of the new contract, being residual waste, co-mingled recyclables and an optional green waste bin. This contract also allows for the introduction of new curbside services such as FOGO, combined food and garden organics during the term of this contract. Prior to the introduction of any new service, such as food and garden organics, there will and must be detailed engagement and consultation between Council and the community and will clearly align with the new services being promoted under the Recycling Victoria policy. The contract also allows for the changeover of bidding lids to meet the Australian standard for different services, red for residual waste and yellow for co-mingled recycling. This will be done through the changeover of lids rather than the complete changeover of bins at a considerable saving to Council and our residents of approximately $4.7 million for the residual waste bin excuse me, and $5.3 million for the recycling bin. This changeover to Australian standard bin colours will assist, will assist all residents, including those new to Wynnum, to immediately recognise each bin and its intended use. The contract also allows for the fitting of radio frequency identification tags, or RFID, to each bin, which will have a clear benefit in tracking the number of bins that are emptied and moving to a payment system where the contractor, contractor is paid based on the number of bins actually emptied, rather than a total, of number, total number of bins in service. Yeah, yeah. This will also allow accurate data on the household waste generation to be used to provide feedback to residents on the level of waste generation and the impacts of waste reduction initiatives and measures the, that, or, and measure the impact of waste reduction serves, uh, initiatives. There is also a requirement for the contractor to introduce electric collection trucks into the collection fleet during the term of contract of the contract, subject only to further development of electric collection uh, vehicles, demonstrating they have the range to allow for a full day's service. Overall, this new contract builds on the solid base provided by the existing waste service and current contractor with the benefits of allowing for the introduction of new services through the contract term and innovations around data collection and management. I must, Mr Mayor, acknowledge Director Stephen Thorpe for allowing me to be involved in and provide feedback during many of the officer meetings I attended, which is not normally allowed as it is operational in nature, uh, with our consultant to formulate the basis for the tender document. Getting there, just. I would also like to acknowledge the efforts and expertise of Simon Clay, our manager, waste management and disposal, and Liza McColl, Council's business, business analyst and the whole team involved in this tender document for their efforts in ensuring this waste contract provides the best outcome both financially and environmentally for the City of Wyndham. It is also important to mention that all bins that are placed at, that are replaced at the start of and during the term of this contract will be recycled and in closing, Mr Mayor, I would like to reinforce my desire in moving forward 
given the fact that we, we as a council, on behalf of our residents, own this re refuse disposal facility, that we, we uh, move towards ensuring that residents must see the benefits either financially or in the services provided uh, for this uh, facility. And it is also worth mentioning, Mr Mayor, that uh, approximately 50% of the costs residents pay to dispose of waste at the RDF is paid straight to the state government in the form of a landfill levy tax. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you very much, Councillor Maynard. Councillor Hooper, you've got three minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Look, I'm just going to be quick again. Um, I remember a few months ago, a lot of community concern being generated from fortnightly garbage collection. Well, I'm going to read out one line from the report, and I think a lot of people will really, really appreciate this. Continuation of the current base collection service. Weekly garbage, fortnightly recyclables, and optional fortnightly garden organics. We are keeping things as you already know it. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you very much, Councillor Hooper. I'm sure your Hobson's Bay colleagues will be oh, envious of, uh, that of that. OK, um, any other speakers? Yes, Councillor Marcus, three minutes. Um, thank you very much, Mr Mayor. Look, I would like to also endorse that because uh, I know people that are in other areas that are getting fortnightly um, um, a garbage collection, which they're finding it very difficult. And I'm so pleased to see that Council have kept our weekly uh, garbage collection. But I think we do an excellent job here in the City of Wyndham with our curbside waste collection. There was just one thing that I did ask um, Mr Thorpe about was I couldn't find anything in there about the green waste. He said uh, because they had put costs in for 200 and I think it was about $289 and then if you wanted a second bin it was 279 but the green waste bin is only $80 if you want, because it's an optional service, so I just wanted to highlight that, that uh, if you want the uh, green waste um, bin, that is only $80 uh, mm. per year, which is really good, because you know not many people want it because they don't have big backyards, but there are many that do. And um, at the moment, you know, the council's doing a wonderful job. I th weekly, we're getting people complaining about garbage litter on all of our roads and the council are getting out as quickly as they can. I just want to let the public know that it is hard because people are not dumping at the tip at the moment. They're dumping on the side of their roads out in Doherty's Road, Boundary Road, uh, Bourbon Road and also down in Werribee South. So residents, please, if you see it, report it because we don't want our city littered. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Marcus. I agree with that. OK, any other speakers? OK, Councillor Shaw, three minutes. Well, thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, yes, I, um, I won't go through. Um, Councillor Maynard summed up very well in terms of this contract. This is a huge contract for our city, a really important one. We often get told that we should focus on what is it, roads, rates and rubbish. So I think this is a, a very good <laughs> contract. Um, and yes, I agree with Councillor Maynard in terms of the work our council officers, in particular our director, Stephen Thorpe, has done in getting us this far, which is absolutely terrific. I do also just want to endorse also what Councillor Maynard said around our residents must see the benefit of this either um, financially or with services um, that we have in our city for waste. We've just, Councillor Marcus has highlighted a problem we have around dumped waste in our city. Um, and I absolutely agree with that. And I think we should be looking at ways either at the gate fee or in other ways that we can give benefit to our actual residents uh, in our city that they can actually get, um, I think, to, to be able to use the RDF um, in a cheaper way. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you very much, Councillor Marcus. Uh, uh, sorry, Councillor Shaw. Thank sorry, you. long, long, long. Uh, <laughs> my apologies. Uh, my apologies. Uh, any other speakers? No, there being none, we'll proceed to a vote. All those in favour of the item? Against? Carried. OK, <laughs> we'll keep moving forward. All right, 8.2, awarding of contract C2138 forward slash 19, the tree cycling block pruning. Uh, the report is on 157 and 162, recommendation on 157. Mover, Councillor Khan, seconder. Councillor Hooper, Councillor Khan, you're speaking to it? 
Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Look, oh, um, okay, five minutes. Th this is another a good contract, and in interesting to see that uh, we used to have one contractor before, which is the uh, citywide contractor, and now we've got two contractors on the board now. And it's also like to put in a notice that, that this contract is for three years and options too. So it's totally 20, up to 2025. Now, our city is growing, as everybody knows, and now we have 240,000 cities across the 70 maintenance zone. Previous, um, so this contract will, was started on first, we, we invited on 2nd of the t February and 2020, now closed on March. It was, uh, of course, that not many people might have not seen, but uh, good to see that the experience of the contractor is uh, great. It covers a lot of councils, and which is the city of Melbourne, city of Port Phillip, city of Melton, city of Wyndham City is doing it. And now also they have a contract, uh, which is another contractor team, Treetop Tower Hire, which is the second contractor, which have a great experience. So it's good to see that the contractors were giving, were awarding a red pass money to the, to the people, to the contractors, those who have extensive experience in delivering the services. Now, as you know, Mr. Mayor, that every three years, as per the compliance, the tree will get a turn to get trimmed. So that's interesting to see. And uh, this dollar money we're spending on a tree and tree and making the Wyndham beautiful and livable city, obviously, and uh, in this particular area where we are going through the COVID-19 and uh, things are hard to maintain. And uh, this is just one of those things. People can see that now Wyndham City Council is growing and maintaining the tenders. And this will cost us a $4.2 million and uh, excess of $4.2 million. And this is just one of those things city, uh, city uh, residents can be proud how we're maintaining our city and making the city livable for everybody. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much, Councillor Khan. Good to hear livable mm. city. Okay, any other speakers? There being none, we'll proceed to a vote. All those in favour of the item? Against? Carried. Item 8.3, the awarding of contract C2139 forward slash 19, a bit more tree pruning and electrical line clearance. The report is on 163 to 167 and the recommendations on 163. Who's moving this one? Councillor Shaw and Councillor Barlow. Councillor Shaw, do you wish to speak to it? No, Mr Mayor, but I will reserve my right to reply. That's specific. I'll take that as your <laughs> contribution. Thank you. Any other speakers? Councillor Marcus? Yes. Uh, just uh, out of interest, are you speaking for or against? No, I'm, I'm actually just going to put something up to Council that I think they should be aware of. That's what I'm going to say. Of course you can, but are you for it? Yes, of course yeah, I'm for it. Just checking, because uh, <laughs> yes. Councillor Shaw sought a right of replies. So I'm yeah. going to check who's... Yes, keep going. This Three year, minutes. We, we've had it, some very upset residents who have come home and found that the contractors have gone in and what they have said, hacked their trees. No. Nope. And so would there be any way that we could contact the residents when it's time to go forward and trim the trees back? They, it look, it's fairly well written here, but I just think to save angst for the tree lovers that might have trees all along their nature strip, if there was some way that we could advise them that the tr contractors are coming in to clear the trees. The other thing is I would like to suggest that Council consider the new trees that we're planting that don't grow tall mm. enough to be entangled in our power lines. And there's lots of wonderful species now that we could use. So they're the two things that I would like to be put forward to the Council officers to consider when planting new trees and when going out to uh, have the contractors trim back the trees. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thanks for that contribution, Council Marcus. Are there any other speakers? There being none, you lose your right of reply. All those in favour? Against? Carried. We're doing excellent here. We're getting through lots. All right. 8.4, the awarding of contract C2209 forward slash 19, the redevelopment of Arndell Reserve synthetic surface. The report's on 168 to 171. The recommendation's on 168. Do I have a mover? Councillor Maynard, Councillor Hooper, Councillor Maynard, do you wish to speak to the item? Thank you, Mr Mayor. Five I do. minutes. Um, suffice to say that I'm pleased to see this project presented to the OCM uh, for approval. This facility has unfortunately been closed for full pitch uh, matches for over 12 months due to a rise in the playing surface presenting a safety risk. 
I know efforts have been made to repair this issue in the past without long-term improvements, so this investment to redevelop the pitch is our best long-term approach to deliver a reliable and high-quality facility for the community. Bless you. We certainly acknowledge and appreciate the patience from the community whilst the investigation and scoping phase was undertaken and hope they enjoy using the new pitch when it is completed in March or April next year. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Maynard. Any other speakers? Councillor Khan, you have three minutes. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Look, this is in Harrison Ward, and which is that uh, we take... Uh, we know that uh, the Harrison Ward is uh, one of the fastest growing uh, ward and, and, and uh, have a lot of uh, population compared to the other wards. It's good to see that now this... Uh, the project, which is that would involve designing and construction, is a new satellite cycle and field located at the Andal Park, which is in Travonaina, which is uh, off the uh, Forsyth Road. Uh, Forsyth Road, and this is uh, just a great facility, Mr. Mayor. If you go there, you will see that how many young, uh, young uh, our local kids are playing it and enjoying mm. that uh, that uh, reserve. Now we wished we can have more of these in our. In, in our city, so make sure we meet the requirement and the uh, fastest growing city, as everyone knows. So it's interesting to see that now this is project this is on track. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you very much, Councillor uh, Khan. OK, uh, any other speakers? There being none, we'll proceed to a vote. All those in favour? Against? Carried. Item uh, six point, uh, sorry, 8.5, the awarding of contract C. 1929 forward slash 18, the panel supply contract project to cell six clay. The reports on 172 to 176, recommendation on 172. Councillor Maynard, do I have a seconder? Councillor Khan, Councillor Maynard, do you wish to speak to the item? I think the uh, report is self explanatory, Mr. Mayor, and I commend re uh, the report to my councillor colleagues. Okay, thank you. Any other speakers? Okay, there being none, I will now proceed to a vote. All those in favour? Against? Carried. Item 9, contract summary, nil. Item 10, questions with notice. Madam Acting CEO. Questions? Yeah, thank you very much, Mr Mayor. We do have some questions with notice tonight, which I'll read out and provide a brief response to. So our first question received from Hiran Raval. Um, a couple of questions here. Question one, how many council staff earn over $150,000 as annual gross salary, excluding super? So here, and I can inform you, and this is available in our annual reports if you're interested. Uh, Wyndham employees, we have 1,874 employees here at Wyndham, of which 45 have an annual gross salary above that amount. Uh, and a second question from here, and uh, please provide details of the salary cuts, if any, the council has passed on to council staff uh, during COVID-19 pandemic, including reduced working hours. Um, I am very sad to say that there have been some staff uh, working in a casual um, work sense that have um, had their salaries cut quite significantly since COVID. Um, of those permanent employees, um, we're paid in line with the enterprise agreement and that um, stands as is at the moment. I will also note that senior officers' sal salaries, um, all senior officers actually voted to agree to a freeze of salaries, so they are on freeze at the moment. So I thank Hiran for those questions. I uh, have some questions received from Rishi Prabhaka. A uh, couple of questions again. Question one, does the council have any proposal to give new grants to small business in Wyndham? And would the council consider giving rate waivers to the businesses which are closed or operating part-time due to COVID restrictions? Um, in response to that, uh, Rishi, council has announced the development of the business grants program um, as part of the Wyn Local Economic Support Package. And as you're aware, the report was tabled at the council meeting this evening and spoken to by numerous councillors here. Uh, prior to COVID-19, council also endorsed the Small Business Entrepreneurship and Innovation Fund. And this fund is included in the 2020-21 budget and is planned to be delivered in January slash February of 2021. This will have a specific focus on new ideas and support for startups. Council also has in place a COVID-19 hardship policy, which provides the opportunity for those ratepayers who are severely impacted by COVID to defer payment of their rates for a period of six months, 
or enter into other agreed payment plans specific to their circumstances. In addition, Council has provided assistance by reducing registration fees and charges for food premises and other small businesses in Wyndham already. And these include businesses such as beauty therapy premises, hairdressers and footpath traders, for example. So we're doing quite a bit in that space. A second question from Rishi. What are the measures the Council has taken to increase police personnel in Wyndham? And what is the per capita police presence in Wyndham for 2016 and 2020? Um, so, of course, the allocation of police numbers is a responsibility of the state government, and the state government, in partnership with Police Command, determined the policing numbers for each area. The crime rate is the strongest determinant of full-time employees in any location. Wyndham crime rate is lower than other areas with higher police numbers, such as the cities of Brimbank, Hume and Lara, Yarra, and for that we're quite thankful. Um, the latest information available from Victoria Police states that there are 149.16 full-time equivalent employees in the police force in Wyndham as of March 2020, and that is five full-time equivalent employees up from December 2019. Wyndham City Officers and Local Victoria Police Command meet on a regular basis to discuss current and ongoing police issues. And our final question comes from... Um, Arnav Sati, again a couple of questions here. Question one, out of councillors Arn, Shaw, Gilligan, Villagonzalo and Maynard, who all have graduated from the AICD course to qualify for the company director course award, um, I think that's asking who have graduated, um, a very specific question. Thanks, Arnav. And the response, councillors Gilligan, Shaw, Arn, Villa Gonzalo and Maynard have undertaken the Australian Institute of Company Directors course and have fully completed the requirements for the program. Um, councillors Gilligan and Shaw have also received their certification to date and councillors Gilligan, Shaw, Arn, Villa Gonzalo and Maynard are all current members of the Australian Institute of Company Directors. And a second question from Arnav. Mayor of Wyndham recently posted online about the partnering of Wyndham Council with Woolworths Group to secure local residents a potential job pathway to 400 plus job vacancies in Truganina. Here, here. Please provide details of the partnership along with the specific role Wyndham Council played in Woolworths setting up the distribution centre in Truganina. And in response, um, Council has a policy support in place to ensure efficiency in the assessment of planning applications for these types of businesses. These specific planning application assessments include businesses that have high value commercial, retail and industrial developments that are going to deliver positive economic outcomes for Wyndham City and commercial, retail and industrial developments that will generate significant numbers of new employment opportunities for the resident workforce. Council's priority approval policy enabled Woolworths to establish this distribution centre within tight timeframes. Council also has an industry engagement role in working closely with large and small employers to identify local work opportunities that can be broadcast to local employment service providers and provided directly to local people who are looking for work. In the case of Woolworths, council staff have been working closely with recruiting managers at Woolworths over the past several months to identify the requirements of the roles available and understand the recruitment process. Over the past nine months, Council has worked through similar processes with more than 20 local businesses in order to assist them to set up their businesses more quickly in Wyndham. Thank you. There are all our questions, Mr Mayor. Great story and a good outcome, uh, Acting uh, Madam CEO. Okay. Uh, now, before I move to item 11, sorry, I am going to revert back to an item just for completeness. We will have to clarify uh, our positions on. Uh, that item in particular is 6.5.1. There was a notice, um, a motion put by Councillor Maynard to put the item. And we also need to clarify Councillor's position on the item. So with that in mind, uh, there will not be a debate on it. It's simply a vote on the item, which was the recommendations outlined on 6.5.1, which was the notice of motion response. 
So uh, I need councillors to confirm whether they're voting in favour or against the recommendations at an officer level. And with that in mind, I'll now ask councillors to cast a vote accordingly. Am I clear? Yes. Great. All those in favour? Against? Carried. Thank you. Okay. I'm glad we did that twice, Mr. What's it? I'm glad we did that twice, Mr. Mayor. Fair enough. Okay. Uh, item uh, 11, Councillor Delegates Report. 11.1, .1, Councillor Delegates Report. The report is outlined on 177 to 178. The recommendation is 178. The report's attachments are on 179 to 183. Do I have a mover for the Councillor Delegates Reports? Yes, Councillor Arn, thank you. Any, yes, Councillor Gibbons. Are there any councillors that wish to speak to their reports? Councillor Marcus. Yes, yeah. um, my new portfolio, yep. Safer Cities. Um, I would just like to say that uh, the COVID-19 community impact and response was updated and provided by council to all the community members and representatives. And uh, Chris McKee, who is the manager of community planning and development, provided an update on the draft towards equity policy statement and the 12 month action plan, which was adopted at the April OCM for public exhibition. The public e exhibition period closed on the 2nd of June and will be presented at the o September OCM for final adoption. And then Kim advised that she was having regular meetings with Inspector Jason Dalton, which I will be taking over. And uh, Chris is going to make sure that that will happen, that I'll go down there and, and learn a bit more about the safety here in our city. So just finally again, I'd just like to say a very big thank you to Kim McAlini for all the work that she's done in this, in this city over the last few years. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you very much, Councillor Marcus. Are there any other speakers to the reports? There being none, we'll now proceed to a vote. All those in favour? Against? Carried item 12, urgent business, nil. 13, confidential business, nil. Close of the meeting as of 8.41 p.m. Thank you, everybody. It's been an eventful day. Have a good night.